Hello, I'm Hal Hill from the Australian National University and we're on the sidelines of the Crawford Australian Leadership Forum and it's my very great privilege to, uh, to introduce uh, a most distinguished uh, Indonesian policymaker and academic, Dr Dewi Fortuna Anwar. Dr. Dewi needs no introduction, but let me just say she is Indonesia's leading foreign policy uh, expert and she has a, a remarkable breadth of knowledge uh, of policy both as an insider and an outsider. Uh, Dewi, welcome to the forum and welcome again to Canberra. Uh, let, me, let me raise uh, some questions with you, fairly broad in scope. F first of all, President Joko Widodo, uh, Jokowi, is now about one third of the way through his first term and most likely he'll have a second term. How would you say he's travelling uh, about a one third of the way through his term? Well, thank you very much, Hal, and it's always a pleasure to be back here in Canberra and, and meeting so many friends. And uh, I'm really enjoying this Crawford Australian Leadership Forum. Uh, with uh, President Joko Widodo and uh, Vice President Yusuf Kalas, uh, the, the first year of the presidency was a bit uh, patchy, as you know, usually it is a case when you form a new administration. Uh, but a lot of the bureaucratic re um, dismantling and, and, and uh, restructuring of ministries uh, have now been finalised. So the cabinet is up and running. Uh, the, the president is very much in charge of the cabinet. Uh, you know, if you remember the first two years, the, the, there was some difficulty of uh, coordination in, with strong personalities in, in the cabinet uh, and, and that is now uh, uh, improving uh, quite significantly with the president very much you know, uh, uh, in, in uh, a strong leadership position. Uh, and importantly, uh, the government has uh, received uh, increasing support from parliament mm -hmm. when uh, the uh, president Joko Widodo started the presidency, uh, the coalition party supporting uh, the government uh, only had about 43% uh, seats in parliament. Now the overwhelming majority of parties in parliament, those in the oppositions, uh, except Garindra, uh, have now moved, have declared themselves to be supporters of the government. So in terms of pushing forth legislations in parliament and managing the cabinet, uh, the government uh, is doing uh, quite well. Well, of course, we have difficulties with the with the economy. Uh, Indonesia has weathered the uh, financial crisis of 2008 uh, relatively well. Uh, the uh, structural structural reforms that have been put in place after the you know Asian financial crisis have borne fruit. So Indonesia has become much stronger uh, in terms of the uh, you know financial institutions. But the uh, of course we continue to uh, to suffer the effects both of the financial crisis and now uh, the, the downturn in, in, in commodity uh, prices. Uh, our revenues have of course uh, declined uh, because Indonesia is still very much dependent on commodity exports and tax collection has fallen below targets. So the government budget uh, is uh, not as, as good as it wanted, as it was projected. In fact, only you know the first few months of the uh, 2016 fiscal year, we already have to uh, to cut uh, some 50 trillion uh, rupees of, uh, of the national budget, and probably, if the tax amnesty doesn't really bring in, you know, the promised uh, fresh monies uh, from from overseas, the um, the budget will probably go down even further. Mm -hmm. So, the politics is good. Economy, we are all suffering like the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. yeah. And in some ways, a bit like Australia, Australia has also been through this massive commodity boom and the political economy narrative in Australia hasn't yet really adjusted to the fact that we haven't got a commodity boom anymore. And I guess the same sort of challenge is, is operating in Indonesia. Yeah, but on the other hand, as they, you know, you know, necessity, necessity makes good policy. Yeah, right. and, and precisely because we are in the middle of this, uh, you know, uh, systemic challenges, uh, yes. global financial and commodity ch uh, challenges. Uh, there is, uh, and, and we are competing with the rest of the world. Uh, there is now a, a keener uh, recognition and also commitment to, to, to uh, carry out various fundamental reforms uh, in terms of improve, to improve Indonesia's economic competitiveness and uh, ease of doing business. This is a very ambitious target, for example, of improving the ease of doing business from the 109 rank now 
to 40 by next year. Mm -hmm. We'll see what happens, but you know, uh, everyone is uh, uh, on, on uh, you know, on this very tight uh, agenda, the, uh, yeah. the president is, and the vice presidents are supervising very hands-on uh, uh, in this. Yes, good. And looking outward, uh, where is Indonesia going? Um, uh, whereas President Yudhoyono had a very strong interest in regional and global affairs, I guess it's fair to say that President Jokowi initially didn't really have the same sort of interest. But inevitably, Indonesia is going to get pulled into a lot of regional and global issues. Uh, you know, ASEAN, for example, and Indonesia and China, and and Indonesia and the Middle East. So, where would you say Indonesian foreign policy is going at the moment? There is a very strong emphasis on economic diplomacy under, under President Joko Widodo. I mean, uh, as the president, uh, pre president uh, Jokowi came to power, there was a, a strong emphasis that Indonesia doesn't just want to carry out foreign policy for the sake of diplomatic uh, uh, niceties or, 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 or international reputation, reputation, put it that way, uh, or prestige, that foreign policy has to bear concrete uh, benefits uh, to, for improving people's welfare. So the, the, the tagline is not one million friends, zero enemies, but rather uh, you know, people-oriented foreign policy uh, with both modest targets. So uh, the stress is more on looking at key bilateral relations where Indonesia could get uh, you know, uh, uh, direct benefits for investment markets and so on and so forth. But as you pointed out, you know, Indonesia is, is a big regional player. Uh, it is, one, it is the, the world's largest uh, Muslim-majority country. Uh, it is uh, a prominent leader in the non-aligned movement in the developing world. It is a member of the G20. Uh, it is, uh, you know, the, the expected to play a regional role within ASEAN. It is not something that Indonesia can actually uh, ignore. Uh, and, and, and in fact, Indonesia has not ignored it. Uh, you know, the, the system is already in place where both the economic focus in foreign policy as well as the more foreign policy proper, you know, diplomatic security orientations foreign policy can actually be, be uh, undertaken by Indonesia simultaneously. Mm -hmm. So Indonesia uh, has continued uh, to be actively engaged both at the regional and multilateral level. Good. Uh, I, the other point which is always worth remembering in the case of Indonesia is it is the world's largest archipelagic nation state with, depending on the sea level, 13 or more thousand islands. And as we know, Indonesia implemented what's often called a so-called Big Bang decentralization in 2001, accompanying the democracy. Uh, and I guess that's still work in progress, uh, that, that decentralisation, but by and large it's working. Uh, what would you say are the major challenges now in implementing regional autonomy vis-à-vis -vis national government yeah. and local governments? So regional autonomy is supposed to, you know, the, uh, both serve political security objectives as well as welfare objectives. The political security objective is that by decentralising power, giving more power to the people at the local level, they would have a greater sense of ownership of uh, being part of Indonesia. No reason for them to demand independence, for example, when they do as well and even better, you know, under, under a united Indonesia. Uh, so sense of belonging, ownership to the central government. That's the political and security objective. But at the same time, there's uh, a real delivery objective to improve governance to improve uh, uh, surface delivery, uh, to allow you know, uh, various uh, regions to develop according to their means uh, and, and, but, uh, and unique characters. Now, the results of regional autonomy s starting in 2001 has been rather patchy. Mm -hmm. Some have done well, you know, some regions have practiced, had developed really best practices and they've improved their welfare and governance, but others have not done so. Some have simply multiplied the numbers of bureaucracies and, and, and the splintering up of, of uh, regional governments uh, with the end results that most of the government spending uh, have been spent on paying the government uh, bureaucrats rather than on develop, uh, improving service delivery. So this is something that we are very concerned about and, and, and there is now a real desire already starting under uh, uh, SBY uh, to improve the uh, decentralization uh, process. So the uh, decentralization law has been revised a number of times, and the last one is in 2014. So the provincial government is now being given uh, a greater uh, supervisory role 
and, and, and the central government is also uh, now more engaged you know, in ensuring that uh, the bylaws passed by regional governments do not impede economic development, do not deter investors, and at the same time do, do not contradict higher laws, for example, on, on pluralism or religious tolerance and so on. And, and secondly, you mentioned about Indonesia being uh, an archipelagic state. Uh, we, have already, we have always talked about Indonesia's archipelagic principles, but in reality, in practice, the focus has always been on land development. Now, uh, the, uh, one of the priorities of the Joko administration is, of course, uh, uh, the maritime areas. Uh, you know, they say, you know, the Indonesia, uh, Jokowi talk about Indonesia as becoming a global maritime fulcrum. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, the development and safeguarding of the maritime domain uh, is a key priority. Mm -hmm. and, and that covers all areas. So it boasts improving connectivity, uh, uh, inter-island shippings and uh, the building ports and, and, and uh, airlines connectivity, but particularly the the, the, the maritime connectivities, managing uh, maritime resources, uh, and then in improving maritime security and defence, uh, and then uh, maritime diplomacy. A lot of our maritime borders are not uh, finalised yet. You know, delineation of boundaries, for example. And fifthly, maritime culture. Uh, we talk about maritime identity, but. Indo most Indonesians are afraid of waters, you know. <laughs> so we have lost our seafaring tradition, you know. So, so these are, you know, uh, some some of the priorities uh, that we uh, that the government is trying to do.